come back home and is on display at wow. the museum. Now, everything you see in the museum is as it was that day. Nothing was done to enhance it. There wasn't there weren't no uh, special effects to make it look more horrific. All was done was it was clean, it was decontaminated, and they removed all the harmful fluids and fuels to make it safe for a museum piece. But this is how it was, and if you notice, that is the front of the vehicle. Where that ladder is, is where the crew cab, the driver, and the passenger, the officer would sit. That's not the rear of the truck, that is actually the front of the truck. It actually completely collapsed and destroyed the front end of that truck. Now the other important piece was the World Trade Center Cross, which was very, very uh, uh, important. It was very historical piece. Uh, now, when they built the World Trade Center, it was very unique. Unlike the Empire State Building, it has a room like this with many columns to support the next floor. The designers of the World Trade Center wanted to maximize floor space. So they said, you know what? We don't want columns in the building. So the architectural engineer designed the World Trade Center so that the outer skin, <coughs> the steel on the outside of the building, was actually what's holding the weight of the building up. So when you went in, it was just an empty hollow room. Only the center was the bank of elevators. Other than that, there was nothing holding each other floor except the outer skin. Now, because of the weight, they had to have cross beams. And when you cross, when you take a piece out, it becomes a cross. Well, as the contractors were removing debris, I mean, this was just how they found it. This was not done by a welder or a torch. Nobody did it with a plasma cutter. This was as they found it. And when they went to remove it, they actually pulled it up out of the debris and removed it and put it off to the side. But then something special started happening. Now, of course, the Christians, this symbolizes what it looks like the Christian cross, the Christ, Christ, uh, cross Christ died on, but the unique thing was that when they put it off to the side, the people started congregating around this cross. It wasn't just a symbol of Christianity, but it was a symbol of hope and a symbol that although we had gone through a horrible time, that we were going to come out of this together as one nation. That was what was important. And people of all faiths, of all denominations, of all creeds and colors were coming to this cross to pray, whatever faith they prayed in, to lay pay homage, leave a flower. So much so that when they went to remove it, they had to actually stop the construction, build a concrete pedestal, and mount the cross on top. And there it remains until about 2006 or 7, uh, when it was removed, so they could begin building the World Trade Center site. Uh, and this is now come back home, and it is probably on display. And although the picture doesn't do it justice, but it stands about 12, 13 feet and weighs about two or three tons. So it's a massive piece of steel that's actually on display here. Now, when they created the World Trade Center, it was World Trade Center was literally at the same level, sea level as, as the Hudson River. And it was w literally one block away. So when they started building these massive caverns and these holes, removing the landfill, they realized that, hey, maybe the Hudson River might seep through and collapse. So they decided to build the upside down bathtub, as you see here, which was called, that's what it was actually called, the upside down bathtub. And it was nothing but a slurry wall with reinforced rebar to keep the Hudson River out, which it never did seep through anyway, but it, that's the way it was designed. And this massive cavern was where the foundation of the building would rise. And it would rise up. And if you've ever been to New York City, if you stand with the World Trade Centers behind you and you look towards New Jersey, all the buildings across the street are now sitting on landfill that was built from the dirt that was removed from the World Trade Center. They created about a third, or I think it was about 120 acres of dirt that was removed, that was dumped in the Hudson River to create landfill. And of course, they got away with it because uh, instead of paying to get rid of the dirt, they told New York City, hey, we'll just dump it in the Hudson River because we're going to make New York City bigger. And what happens when you make New York City bigger? When you add more land, more taxes, you're going to make more money. So New York City said, hey, Keep going, just don't get too close to Jersey because they're going to claim us again. <laughs> Stay away from Jersey. <laughs> but, but they did, and it's, it's called Battery Park City now. And if you go across the street, you're actually standing on a landfill that was dug up from these two buildings. Now, on May 2014, this was the inauguration of the museum. Uh, our president came to inaugurate the museum here, uh, and we were way in the back. And you notice in the back was the our perfect action, standing tall and still about 15 to 20 feet or so on top. And if you look at the bottom, Third guy in is Governor Chris Christie, uh, and if you, he was our governor a few years ago. And if you ever heard the the, uh, the uh, GWV Bridgegate scandal that happened, uh, because the mayor of Fort Lee, which where the bridge is at, where we're stationed, didn't want to support him, and his cronies and comrades decided they were going to pay him back, and they were going to congest all the traffic in Fort Lee by giving instead of three lanes, which we usually give to Fort Lee, 
to alleviate the traffic, we'll give them one lane. And the sad part is that uh, my crew was the crew that actually went out and put the cones at the order of his number two guy, uh, Wildstein, which was the, his uh, boyhood, childhood friend who grew up with him. So a lot of these guys had to go to federal grand jury, they had to go testify, uh, and, and again, people would say, well, who ordered you to do it? And I'd say, he did. And I was one that said, well, if they call me, I'm gonna have a picture of Christie on my phone. And when they asked him, I'd say, he, he, he did it. <laughs> but, uh, but again, this was a, it was a nice occasion, it was a nice time to, to be there, to witness that. And it was actually closed for about 60 days or so, to, just to honor the family members and the first responders. Then it was opened up to the public. And right now, although it's not a national park, it is a private non-profit organization that runs it. It is one of the fastest growing uh, museums and memorials in the United States that's being visited every day. Now, the one problem we had was, are we going to build it the same, or are we going to do something different? I would have liked to have seen it the same, because I, I really enjoyed the World Trade Center. I spent a lot of time there. Uh, but they decided to do away with building anywhere on the actual site where the buildings were. They considered that hallowed sacred ground, and they, they would never build there again. So instead of building two towers, they put all their eggs in one basket and built one tower. And around the perimeter of what is now the Memorial Gardens would be the new buildings would rise. The problem was that underground transportation hub. 250,000 people, it's very, it's going to be really hard to move that kind of people through a museum every single day. Mm -hmm. it was, it's just more not going to happen. So we had to figure out a way to keep that important hub in New York City, but they had to move it two blocks back and create the Oculus, this $4.1 billion Oculus. And this is the new World Trade Center transportation hub, uh, and it's two blocks back. And this is actually tall enough to hold the Statue of Liberty with her torch extended, and she still has about 20 feet to scratch her head if she had an inch. So it's, it's enormous. Uh, it's now the seventh or eighth largest mall in the United States, believe it or not. Uh, and if you continue walking in this direction, you actually go underneath the World Trade Center site. You go underneath West Side Highway, you come up on the Battery Park side on the, on the water side. That's how, that's how big it is. So this was part of the redevelopment of the World Trade Center. Uh, when it's all said and done, the Port Authority would have probably spent about $15 billion to rebuild it, the entire area. We're building all seven buildings back again. Now, this is the new memorial that we created. And the new memorial encompasses a, uh, two water fountains. And around the water fountain with circumference are, is a square rectangular hollow piece of tubing or metal tubing that goes all the way around. And in, on it is engraved the names of those who perished. From the 93 attack, 9-11, Pentagon, Pennsylvania, even those that died on the plane. They'll say United Fight 93 and all the names on there perished on that plane. Uh, and this was done specifically so that it was easy accessible even for a handicapped person in a wheelchair. It's on a 45 degree angle. It's about waist high, so you can go up. And they wanted to actually be able to let the people touch their loved ones or the person they want to see or, or come there. And, it, it, and I kind of use it as if you visit the Vietnam Memorial, Vietnam Memorial in Washington, it starts off about this tall, and then you get to the end, it's 15 feet high. And if you want to leave the name of your comrade you fought with, well, I can't reach, so I got to leave it down at the bottom. And they realized that they didn't want that. They wanted the people to be able to touch each person that they were there for. And by also being hollow, they were actually able to leave a flower or a card or a note in that person's name. And like I said, these old pictures are all taken by myself. Every time I go, uh, a lot of the brethren that travel from other states or around the world, uh, this Wednesday when I land back, there's a brother who's coming. His sister, mother, and father are traveling from Ohio, and he wants me to take them on a private tour. So I do tours of the Grand Lodge building, uh, of, of the World Trade Center. So I've, I've done it about 40 times, and I've become a... A tour guide. I told my wife when I retired, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, do a, I'm going to be a tour guide down at Ground Zero. But I truly love it uh, for me. And I take millions of pictures and then I wind up trying to display them over here. But uh, this is the beauty of it.